Hello everyone, I'm here to do my wrap up for March and in March I read 11 books and 2644 pages and 19.67 hours. Um, so quite standard I would say. Um, the first book I finished um, I almost read completely on on uh, February but I finished it in March and that's The Emperor of Portugalia by Selma Logolov. Um, and I did this in audiobook and this book is about uh, this couple, especially the man that have a daughter and at the beginning he was like why why am I having a child I don't understand and then the moment that he um, holds the newborn he completely falls in love and then the baby grows out to be a daddy's girl until she grows up and goes away um, to study and, or like to live in the city basically and that devastates the man and so he kind of goes crazy <laughs> um, and that's kind of what the book is about um, I really enjoyed it, I think it was very tender um, and it kind of gave a different light on what it is to be the parent that is left behind when your child goes away um, when someone that has been so important to you and you love so much goes away um, and she's not very likeable um, she does some things that are really um, not good because she's ashamed about how how his dad is and how his dad reacts to things um, but yeah overall uh, I enjoyed the book uh, quite a lot. Um, the next book I read is Belladonna by Dasa Derndic. Um, um, this is uh, translated from the Croatian by Celia Howersworth. Um, and this is um, this was the winner of the Warwick Prize for Women in Translation in 2018, I think. Um, and it's kind of like a man that. Um, he kind of travels around, um, he is diagnosed with cancer and so he's kind of like um, looking back at his life and like the life of Europe and um, all kinds of weird things. Um, it's a, a bit kind of mixed media so for example you have like lists of people that die in certain places, uh, you have uh, photos um, photos and stuff like that um, and it's very uh, experimental in the way it's written um, and I think that's the main thing that it's like interesting about it um, but yeah other than that I mean there were some interesting thoughts especially about the Holocaust and the Second World War and uh, there were some interesting comments about that and also about obviously the uh, Yugoslavian war and stuff like that but yeah I found it a little bit um, yeah the, I was not interested in the character and the character is a big part of this book so um, maybe it was just not not for me um, but it doesn't mean that it's a bad book or anything then the next book I read is Picnic in the Storm by Yukiko Motoya. Um, this is a, a collection of short stories and most of them are kind of about women and about wives. Um, and yeah, it, I think my f favorite story was like the first one was about this woman that um, decided to start building her body, go to the gym to like lift weights and build her muscle. Uh, um, because she is so um, so bored in her life, she works in a beauty salon, her husband doesn't pay any attention to her and so she starts doing this and it's funny like how the husband never notices that she's like she, her body drastically changes and her husband never notices and then there's also certain uh, talk about how people in the society judge her for what she's doing um, and yeah it was it was very interesting um, I think some of the stories of course I liked more than others and some of them were more memorable than others uh, but I did like that each story took their time it's not like they have uh, like a similar length or anything one of like the longest one was a hundred pages and the shortest one was probably like five so yeah um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed this. Uh, it's 
short stories is, is not normally my kind of thing, but uh, I enjoy this uh, enough, I guess. And the next book I finished is Seven Fallen Feathers by Tania Talaga, which is a non-fiction book about um, native people in Canada. And so it particularly talks about these seven students, high school students that were going to this high school in uh, Thunder Bay, which is a city in, in Canada, near Toronto, I think, in Ontario, anyway and uh, they died um, and it kind of exposes all the reasons why these kind of things happen um, it exposes the fact that they don't have um, high schools up in the in the uh, places where they live um, or at least not good ones and so people voluntarily still go to cities the way that the, the similar way as the um, um, residential schools used to work but voluntarily because they need the education and also like how much more they are exposed to drugs and uh, alcohol and stuff like that and how much more, more vulnerable they are for those things and for poverty and they don't have like their um their support ne network around them that could help them out and they are not also when they disappear the police is a lot less likely to look for them and like make a case out of it uh, so it exposes all of these things and i i found it really interesting i think it was well constructed and it did shine light on on a problem um in canada next one i finished was six of crows by lee bardugo um this is a fantasy book about this um collection of um people that are normally like outcast of society um some of them are like robbers some of them are um prostitutes and some of them are both uh, it's a collection but anyway these people um are hired to get into the most secure place in this world um and get a scientist because he invented a drug that can be very very dangerous um if used um, incorrectly and so uh, yeah that's more or less what the book follows it follows these people getting together and then going into this quest and I really enjoyed it it was fun uh, the characters read a little bit older than what they are supposed to be in my opinion um, and I also didn't love the fact that everyone kind of has to be paired up um, but other than that, I really enjoyed it. I think it was very well written. I was quite surprised about how like developed and all of that it was. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take pick up the sequel at some point because I, I enjoyed it. Then the next uh, book I read was A Woman in the Polar Night by Christian Ritter, which I read for my book club. And we all uh, really enjoyed it. So Christian Ritter is a German, one, an Austrian woman that... Um, was uh, she went to live in Svalbard uh, in the 1930s um the book is from 1938 um uh, but she was there like a few years before uh, because her husband kind of got a job there and so he's like okay come live with me in like pretty much the north pole and she's like okay let's go uh, and so she goes there and lives in this little hut for a year with her husband and another guy Norwegian guy um, and learns a lot about how to survive in that kind of condition um, and she was like so pragmatic and so unfazed by any of this like as I said um, the uh, the husband is gone for years and then he writes to her like um, I decided to move here please come with me and she was like okay I should uh, yeah, I should pack baking soda because they probably don't have it there. And I was like, whoa, okay, um, yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's kind of like the, the tone of the book. Of course, she has uh, hardships and each of the persons there kind of deal with uh, their own um, issues of being so isolated in their own way. She cleans a lot um, in this little tiny cabin they have. Um, but yeah, it's it, it was uh, it was very interesting. She's a fascinating woman. There is very little to research about from this book uh, about her, but she's fascinating. 
um, and we all really enjoyed it. Then the next book I finished, I also did an audiobook, and that was Undiscovered by Gabriela Wiener, which is longlisted for the International Booker this year, and I have a full review of it, so I will link it down below. Uh, but this one is kind of like auto-fiction, um, and it basically, we start the book when the dad of the author died, and she goes back to Peru for the funeral and stuff, and there are like two main streams of thoughts that happen in this book. One of them is like uh, her ancestry, so Wiener is an Austrian name um, from uh, Vienna, uh, and um, so she thinks that she has colonizer's blood, and like her family is very proud of her ancestry, but she's not because she's Peruvian and she like she looks native, so she wants to reclaim that um, race for herself, um, but she also like kind of is curious about how all that happened. Um, and so she's researching her ancestry and um, this man that is supposed to be her ancestor and muddy secrets come out of that. Um, and then the other main thing that we look at in this book is her relationship. So she is in a polyamory relationship. Um, she has a husband and she has a, a girlfriend. She lives in, in uh, Spain and the girlfriend is Spanish and the husband is Peruvian as well. And uh, there's also a lot of talk about the colonizing relationships and the colonizing everything in general because of the ancestry. Um, but she's also having other relationships outside that core family unit that she has um, and yeah she talks a lot about how she feels about her relationships and um, how like the rules of her their relationship and how it works and kind of um, the struggles that she's having with it and not because it's a polyamorous relationship but because she's struggling with relationships in general and um, that goes also back to her childhood and her relationship with her parents and stuff like that. I really enjoyed it, I really enjoy her writing, I think she's a very smart person and I like to hear her thoughts, so I really enjoyed this book. And then the next book I read was The Shadow Lines by Amitav Ghosh. I know that Amitav Ghosh is a very well-regarded author. Um, I did not particularly think anything crazy about this. Like, um, the first two-thirds of the book is kind of about this boy in India having like falling in love with her co his cousin and uh, the last third is more into the politics of of India um, and it, it does show a lot about all the family relationships and um, like her cousin is very privileged and she travels around like I don't know if her dad is like a um, embassy official or something but they live in a lot of countries a lot of the time um, and he is very jealous of that and um, they relate how the relationship works and they come back to visit and stuff like that so that is interesting but it's nothing like groundbreaking and I just felt like yeah I was not that amazed by anything that this book did and I didn't want to read about how in love he was with her, his cousin, even though she, he went, didn't want to admit it. So this was okay. The next book I finished is True Beast by Saranovich, and this is about a uh, deaf school, um, and we follow mainly three characters. The first one is February, which is the um, director of the school, um, the principal, I don't know, uh, and then the the next uh, character that we follow is Charlie, who is a girl that just started going to the school. Um, her parents have just divorced and um, before they divorced, um, the mom was very keen on getting her implants and her going to normal school so that she will not like fit in society. Um, and when they, they divorce, the dad gets custody and he decides with her that she can go to deaf school. Um, she still has the implants and everything, but um, which is a main plot point of, of the book. Um, but yeah, she starts going to ASL classes and deaf school and gets into the um, culture of deaf people. Um, and then we follow Austin, that is a student on this school as well, but he is he has a very different background because his mom is deaf and his dad is an interpreter, so he has always been 
in the deaf community and he, he has a, a lot more knowledge about the deaf um, the deaf community than Charlie does and they kind of get into a relationship and he shows her a lot about the deaf culture and stuff like that and um, yeah basically it is about deaf culture that's the main point of this book there is also of course a plot um, that develops uh, throughout the book and some mess up things especially Charlie is a fairly mess up character um, but it's understandable with uh, all the issues that she has had I think this book does a great job uh, showing people um, all the like little bits of deaf culture and why it is important to keep and why it is important for deaf people to learn ASL and the people around the deaf people uh, because even if you have implants and stuff it's not really like you don't really hear anyway and it's so um, energy consuming to have to always be in these environments when you are not able to communicate and um yeah i really enjoyed it i learned a lot i it this has brought me to um to look up um a lot of things about deaf culture in on the internet and i'm very glad it also has like small snippets of like asl and how kind of it's a completely different language the grammar is completely different to spoken english um and so yeah that was very interesting to to understand a lot more about deaf culture i really really enjoyed this and the next book i finished was the house with the stained glass windows by zana zlowinowska um translated by antonia lloyd jones from the polish um and this is about um it's kind of it's not multi-generational but it it's about four generations of women living in a house in lviv and it's mostly narrated from the youngest one um, perspective and it kind of goes back into each of the characters and like gives a backstory and also um, like their relationships for example like the great-grandmother was not very keen on um, any of their descendants to have like a, a dab at, at art and like one of them wanted to be a singer and she was like no 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 you shouldn't be a singer you don't have talent and the other one wanted to be like an artist like a painter and she was like no 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 you, you don't have to do that um i i don't approve and uh, stuff like that and then at the end they they find out that the great grandmother was an opera singer um so it has a lot of this um multi-generational relationship day-to-day -day kind of things but it also has like the obviously the Lviv has been through a lot um, it was Austro-Hungarian then it was Polish then it was Russian then it was a Ukrainian um, and there is like the Polish-Ukrainian war the Russian invasions all of these things and each of the characters kind of has their own experience of each of these uh, events and kind of goes through it in the book as well um i think i think it was very interesting in terms of the politics and the learning more about the region um i sometimes struggle a little bit with like the backs and forth uh, i think it went a little bit too much back and forth to be able to fo fully follow um where we were with uh, characters and where we were with story and all of that stuff um so in that sense um it's not the like the most neat book constructed book but i think it's still worth a read especially if those t topics of uh women ge uh, relationships uh, intergenerational relationships and the um history of the region is is interesting to you i think this is a good one to pick up it's just maybe not like a perfect book and then the last book i read is also an audiobook and that's catch the rabbit by lana Bastacic. Um, and this is about two friends that they were friends in school and high school and then they lost touch because of um, a dispute that happened I think it was in college um, and then like some 10 years later one of them calls the other one like I'm stuck here I need you to come pick me up and the the other one was living in Ireland and was like are you crazy I cannot just fly to Bosnia to pick you up um 
and the other one was like, yeah, I, I really need it, you, you have to come. So she ends up going and then we follow them in this road trip for them to go back to wherever they needed to be. Um, and like going through their emotions and the relationship and it's a very complicated relationship because um, there was a lot of love but also a lot of hate, a lot of envy uh, in both sides and it's just one of those very very messy relationships um, and it also reflects on like the state of that part of the world um, especially since like the person that narrates the story lives in Ireland she can more clearly see why she left and the things that she misses and the things that are um, not great about the region especially with like the war and the all of the uh, the issues um, that uh, that region dealt with in the last uh, 20 years or so um, well not 20 years like probably more like 40 now but um, you know what I mean the 90s and and stuff um, and uh, I found both characters extremely annoying um, I don't have to like the characters of my books but I do get very annoyed by annoying characters uh, which I know is a point but um, yeah I don't particularly enjoy that experience there is enough annoying people in real life to to have that uh, in a book um, so yeah I was not like overly taken by this book but I think that the concept and the way that it was like the plot and the way that things were going uh, I think it was good I just like personally for me this kind of books don't work for me so well uh, so it was more of a it's me not the book kind of thing but uh, yeah I, I, this one I didn't overly enjoy it um, but I recognize that it's not because it's bad um, so yeah, those are all the books that I have read this month. Uh, let me know if you have read any of them, if you are interested in any of them. Um, I will be very curious to know if you have. Uh, and in the next video, bye!